For the past 10 days, I had an amazing opportunity to be in Israel to film a documentary. Now, I'll, I'll touch a little bit on the client and the story a little bit later, but in this video, I want to share with you the rig that I use 90% of the time while we're in the streets, running around the city, and it's pretty much the most versatile uh, setup for me because there's some things that I needed and some gear I actually really want to share with you all that kind of changed the experience while filming. So if you're interested in it, stick around and uh, let's get right into it. All right, so no surprise, you guys have seen this rig here and there. This is the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro. You've probably seen this when I've been posting on the community tab or Instagram or other places, Twitter like that. And this is probably the best handheld rig I've built for on-the-go um, documentary work. And mind you, I haven't shot a documentary in about four or in about four years actually. The last one was in Africa, uh, and I was using a Sony FX7 at the time. Um, so transitioning to this, a little bit more smaller package. Obviously it's not that small when everything's built out. And again, I'll go through each and every piece of tool because I actually didn't need everything that you see on this kit. So uh, let's go over why first I even picked up the Blackmagic Pocket and why I think it's one of the underrated cameras to use for documentary. When you're filming a documentary, you need something that can adapt to whatever situation you're filming in. So having internal NDs is the perfect example for that. I do not like carrying uh, uh, ND filters that screw on or even ND filters that drop into your map box and I'll explain the map box later but that is just not a very conducive and fast solution when you need to change due to lighting so having internal NDs up to six stops that is that is gold man that bird is chirping the second thing is the internal codex um, b-roll we all know this is such a very powerful um, raw type of file that you can change and do need to do in post. Now, man, I had some beautiful imagery from this camera and I was just so, it just felt so good being able to sink my teeth on uh, imagery that's far different from where I'm used to and being an element. So it just opened up so many created, creative opportunities. And having a Kodak that's so rich and dynamic allow me to just express certain things due to color, dynamic range, all those things. Now, when filming in B-roll, my main settings were the 5.7K at 12 to 1 compression. And so on a 512 gig CFast card, which is from Angelbird, um, that gave me about 107 minutes, which was more than enough when I knew I was going to just be out and about in the city, capturing what was happening, capturing interviews, things like that. I didn't do a ton of slow-mo. Um, if anything, I did 48 frames a second, which is like my sweet spot for a lot of things that I do. And... Um, when you switch over to that frame rate, um, it drops down to about 36 minutes or so on the CFast card. And um, as a backup, the Angelbird V90 SD card, 128 gigs, on the 5.7K 12 to 1, that gives you about 26 minutes. And that was purely for backup. There were times that I did run out of storage um, on the CFast card, so that backup came in handy. Angelbird is pretty much what I go with anyway, so uh, it was pretty reliable in this sense. And I had three of those cards. Now the third feature I, I really like about this camera, and it's actually surprising, is that it actually has decent preamps. Even in the 3.5 millimeter jack, as well as the mini XLR ports. I think my daughter just saw me. <laughs> as well as the mini XLRs, but I don't use mini XLRs, so I have the adapter from wooden camera, which is the A-Box, which converts the mini XLRs to full XLRs and I was able to use my Rode NTG3 uh, for the interview settings uh, for audio. The humility that comes with that, the humility of knowing my limitations but also knowing my, my spaces for growth and seeing where this place can help me grow in my faith. Now one of the things I did purchase for this trip was this unique mic from Sennheiser. This is the MK40 440 and this is a X and Y stereo microphone. Now when I was researching this, I knew I wanted something different from just using an onboard shotgun mic because you know, you get just a narrow field of view and we're kind of used to it. And I want something a little bit more dynamic because I knew going into this, I'll be in narrow streets. And so I really wanted to capture the entire environment in a different way that audio can be expressed along with the visuals. And so I took a risk. I didn't know what to expect. There are reviews, but it wasn't catered to what I was looking for. So I hope I can explain what I was looking for and how this delivered. Now, if you wanted to see a full-on breakdown of this mic from my perspective and using it for documentary, let me know in the comments below. But essentially, this gave a much more dynamic and spatial feeling 
with the imagery. And so paired with a wide angle lens, this really does help uh, immerse you into where the scene is. That's how I felt when I was using it. Um, because if you have dialogue that's happening here or conversation, but you can still clearly hear what's happening over here. So yeah, your mind is being um, enveloped into that space as the camera's pointing it from that visual. I hope I'm not rambling, but that's how I felt, and that's how what delivered. I'm very happy with it. Now, the downside with this mic is that you know you have your front cable here. Um, I wish it had a little bit more professional ports instead of using the um, 3.5 jack. But for the most part, it delivered. The other downside of this is that it doesn't turn on with the camera. Now, the M. K400 or the 400 MK, I forget their names. I have the other shotgun mic from Sennheiser, and that turns on when you turn on the camera. So I wish it had that feature because sometimes I did forget that the mic was on and the battery did drain. Now it uses AAA batteries, and so I got some Duracells, and it lasts for about 30 to 40 hours or so on a single, on a two battery thing. So yeah, but very pleased of the audio coming out of this paired with the different mics that I used. And the mics I used were the, again, MK440, MK400, and the Rode NTG3 for the XLR breakout. Now, speaking of the lenses, I brought with me four lenses. I have my trusty 1835 Cine lens. Um, yeah, that was a little interesting to use just because it's a lot bigger, but a lot of my lenses are heavy. I am using right now Zeiss lenses, and I love pairing them with the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro, the image that comes out of this. But the main lens I used most of the time was the 15 mil. The 15 mil, this delivered on so many levels. Now, it's not the fastest lens, but man, the image, the clarity that comes out of this, the micro contrast, all those things that we love about Zeiss lenses, this lens delivered. This was the workhorse on the trip. And I wanted to go in knowing that I'm going to shoot a lot of wide angle stuff because it's the most versatile. If I cropped into 2.7K, I still had a high resolution enough where it still retained detail and it got me a little bit closer. So 15 millimeters on a 6K Pro is maybe, I don't know what my math is, maybe a 28 or so, close to 28. And so um, if you crop in even further with that window sensor is another 2.5, I think. And you got closer to 40. So you have like a range. Now... You know, that's not ideal for most of the time. There's not a lot of zoom lenses I like. I don't like using still lenses. Again, so prime was the way to go. But outside of the 15 mil, I brought with me the 51.4 from Zeiss. This is the Milvis and the 135. And that was my specialty lens on this trip because I knew there was going to be spots where I couldn't get where I need to get to. And um, I use it in a lot of different ways, especially during sunrise to get some different looks, um, crowd shots, things like that. Um, I actually really do like that lens. Um, it still acts like a still lens, but it's built super well. All these are built super well, even though these lenses do come as weather seal. Since I changed the mounts to put on the brass EF mount to F mount from um, Sim mount lens, um, it kind of voids that weather sealing. But for the most part, this holds up really well with the dust that was there, there during the time. And um, I'm very happy that uh, how these images turned out in my opinion. So what I noticed about this lens is that it has a very particular lens flare. It's a purple lens flare of several orbs darting across the center of the frame. And a lot of times I didn't like that. It was a little bit distracting. So having a matte box did cut out some of that when I had the top flag on. And that's what I wanted to do. And now, okay, some people might say, you know, sometimes you got to just let things kind of go. I did have that time to have that control. So I just make sure I just did that ahead of time. And it's really up to you and your preference of how you want to film it. Uh, this is the wooden camera cage for the Blackmagic 6A Pro. I like this cage just because it gives me a lot of range of mounts. You can see this top part here, a lot of quarter 20s and 3 8s to mount a lot of different things. And you know guys, I do enjoy mounting different things due to situations that I'm having. And so you probably have seen that little video going around where I mounted a, a couple magic arms as well as the boom pole. And there's been a polarizing uh, conversation about it, but it was safe. 
I double checked. I am a professional, and it worked for my for my needs because I couldn't bring a lot of stuff on this trip. So that was I was able to be able to do that just because I had a much wider base on this camera, set up with a hefty tripod and things like that. So when it comes to the base of this, uh, if you get the full package of the wooden camera cage, comes with the top handle, of course, comes with the bottom rails as well. And I like this system because now I can mount my battery, which is from Anton Bauer, the power base. This allowed me to power the camera pretty much all day. It gets me about four hours on a full charge, as well as it charges the MP battery, um, the Canon battery that's in the camera as well. So I was pretty good with batteries. I had two of these, so I could swap them out if I needed to. I did have two Blackmagic cameras as well, um, but that allowed me to be a very flexible and record all day. And most of the time, I just had the camera on. I brought the brightness to a reasonable level so I can actually see if I didn't have a monitor. Especially in this configuration, I just used the back monitor, which drains the, back, drains the camera even more. But um, that's what I did for the most part. Now, you might ask yourself, why the heck does he have rails on here without any follow focus or any other support? The reason why I have rails on here is that it acts as protection. Um, a lot of times if I didn't need to sit my camera down, if I didn't have this, the matte box as well as the lens itself, whatever, it would just hit the ground or you know something can happen or whatever. So this acted as extra protection as well as another holding point. What's, what's nice about this setup is that I have my handle here and if I need to focus, you know, I have my thumb here. I'll be pretty pretty nimble, it can stay close to my body, I can get all the necessary stable shots. If I need to hold on to different parts of the, the rig, either by the mat box, by the handle, by the, the rail here, I could. And so that allowed me to just be nimble. And I like being able to, to use my camera certain ways where it's not as comfortable, but if I have a certain mounting point, I can be as comfortable as possible. But all this as well as weight and it pulls the camera down this way versus it being front heavy, it's not front heavy at all. All the way is being pulled by the center because everything's being, uh, I lined up everything for the center. And so that gives me a lot more stable footage. So if I'm holding the camera as well as the strap, the strap is from Peak Design, I was able to carry it, carry it, and so I had a fanny pack, and the rails, another purpose of it, it just slid right into my fanny pack and I could walk around, it kind of slung like a gun holster. I did have some looks from security. This camera is not your typical tourist camera, I guess you can say. Um, but imagine if I had an FX9 or FX6, I'd be way more noticeable. So it has its pros and cons. But anyway, I was able to just slide it into that, walk around, be fine, and get the weight off my arms. Now over time, the weight did kind of, you know, get my shoulders tired, but I just made sure I slung it around, made sure something like that, and I was kind of fine and I could walk like that. So this made it a very easy, easy setup for me to kind of get what I need to get. Now when I, like I said, when I want to be stable, I was stable because there was no micro jitters. Everything was like, boom, I can just be like that. Get that shot in right there. And if I want to feel a little more chaotic for energy, I just kind of just walked a little bit faster or shook the camera a little bit more. I have that control. I'm all about control if you guys haven't learned yet. So now, like I said, I, I did have other configurations for this rig and I did have my small HD Action 5 monitor. Um, about the time you're watching this, there is a review about this monitor, a real world review. Fantastic buzzer monitor that Small HD made. And so if you're interested, make sure to check that out. The link is in the description or a card right here. But I did have this when I needed to have less of the camera draining the battery because I knew we were going to have longer days. And so this was able to put the main screen all the way to zero. And I was able to monitor this with this high brightness, especially in the middle of the day, hot. Um, surprisingly well this held up so again if you want to see the full video and my thoughts make sure to watch that video another resource if you're getting into documentary filmmaking and you're wondering what cameras to use mark bone does talk about his camera even though we all know he's about story which is king we all know that but his setup is the fx6 i believe and he kind of goes through his gear that he uses and so i think it is important to find the right camera for the situation that you use not all cameras are made for documentary even though you can do it there's some things that just our quality of life and so you might want to be able to look into that to see this is going to going to fit I think in most documentary filmmakers will say internal NDs are a must a robust robust Kodak and proper audio um, preamps uh, to get clean audio or have multiple streams of audio is super super key those are the top three things I think you'll need in any documentary camera no matter what the brand so yeah 
Cool. Um, stay, stick around. I will be talking more about this project. There is a lot that I learned. There was a lot that I loved to get my, my teeth synced into. I, I was able to go much deeper than surface level and a lot of uh, topics that we had talked about. So I can't wait to share with you that experience. I will be talking more about the gear as well. Um, so, yeah, cool. All right, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm going to go cut the grass now. Fun. <sighs>